in with more excuses and say, why are you making excuses? I just told you what happened to you is a good thing. You need to reframe your mind. Bad things happen to Batman. They killed his parents. Do you understand? That's why he's Batman. You've just told me you have the building blocks to become the most, you might become top G when I retire. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> what are you complaining about? He goes, well, what do I do? I said, you need to work. Take all that trauma. If you're truly heartbroken, my friend, and we've all been there as men, if you're truly heartbroken, you can't sleep. That means you're gonna get in fantastic yes. shape. You better hit the gym. You have nothing else to do. Stop watching YouTube. Stop emailing me. I want pictures of you in the gym. Get the fucking work. Heartbreak's a fantastic motivator, as is depression, as is sadness. Great. Look at what's pissing you off and make sure it never happens again. If you were jacked and rich as fuck, she probably wouldn't have left your ass. So whose fault is that? The best thing about being a man, the best thing about being a man is you get to build your character from the ground up. You're not born with any value. You're born as a blank slate. I decided I wanted to be a big, toting, kickboxing, Bugatti driving fucking bad boy. I did it all myself. You get to choose you want to be a musician and be sensitive and play guitar and get them that and be, and be important that way. You get to choose you want to go get in the cage and kick the fuck out of somebody. You get to be, choose to be anything you want, but you have to go and do it. It's going to be difficult because it's competitive, but that's the beauty of being a man, the blank slate. And I inspire men to look at themselves as a blank slate and go, you know what? I ain't shit now, but I can become anything I want. How could I possibly give up on myself? And this is what I was talking earlier about the hero's arc and the arc and the, and the redemption, because I think that inside of human consciousness, people are very, very familiar with the idea of, of the arc of a villain turning into a hero. It's in the Bible. It's in every superhero movie. The guy starts off bad. He's crazy. He's too bad. We don't want him. He's a maverick. You can't control him, blah, blah, blah. But towards the end, you're like, where's Batman? Where's Batman at? And it's going to take a matter of time before people realize, you know what? Tate was actually a good force for the youth. Perhaps he needs to create his message. Perhaps he needs to take his newfound fame on board and change the way he says certain things. Agreed, I'm not infallible as an individual. But to sit here and say I'm dangerous and I must be deleted is disservice to all the men of the world. And then they're gonna start printing articles talking about men's mental health. They don't give a fuck about men. They don't give a shit about the 18 year old boy out there who can't get a girlfriend is genuinely lonely. And the fucking sports star's fucking them all. I'm telling him what he has to do. I'm saying, listen, bro, of course the sports star's fucking them all. He's a G, you ain't shit. If you were a chick, would you choose you? Because I fucking wouldn't. I find it extremely hypocritical. And of all the things in the world, my pet peeves, the things that annoy me most are hypocrites. I find it extremely hypocritical that the system itself pretends it gives a shit about men's mental health. It will sit there and pretend it cares about all the men out there who are depressed, struggling, sad. But when I come along and tell them the only way I've ever found personally to be happy and contented, because I can only talk my personal story, is to become a man of status, to become successful, to go through pain, to use my trauma, to use the bad things that happened to me, to galvanize myself against attacks from the matrix, as I've just proven I can easily weather. When I talk about men's mental health, they delete me. I thought you gave a shit about men's mental health. I'm the most popular man on the planet and 90% of my content is not even about women. It's motivational and antidepressive. And you're gonna sit here and delete me saying that I'm bad for women. What about men? I thought you gave a shit. All of a sudden, you don't give a fuck anymore, right? Just delete him, who cares? I had a man message me, a man emailed me saying that he was gonna kill himself. I get about 10,000 emails a week. I don't answer all of them, but I answer some of them. This guy, his email was so short that I believed him. Subject was, I'm gonna kill myself. And the thing is, I know you won't reply. I'm gonna kill myself. I don't know what to do. That was email. And I sat there and said, listen, my friend, I get a lot of emails. I don't know how serious you are. I want you to make me a promise. I'm gonna guess that you're not in the best physical condition you could be in. I want you to make me a promise that you're gonna get six pack first and send me a picture of you with a six pack. And if you still feel like killing yourself after that, I don't know you, I can't tell you what to do, but I want you to get six pack first. Email me back, we start going back and forth, et cetera, et cetera. I convinced him to get the gym, I said, get six pack, see how you feel. If you still feel like killing yourself, then I'm not telling you to kill yourself, I'm telling you that's what I would recommend. Start training. By the time he started sending me physique updates of him in a better condition, he started sending me huge emails of apology and thank you saying you saved my life. I can't believe I was thinking of killing myself. You can't believe he changed. If that man would have emailed Logan Paul, would Logan Paul have given a fuck? He would have ignored the guy. You think he answers a single fucking email? He doesn't give a shit. All these fucking media figures, all these people who are good for the system, who are dancing on the devil and fucking sitting here talking about dangerous rhetoric and all the other bullshit. You think they'd fucking answer an email? They don't give a solitary fuck about the young men of the world. They would have left that man to die. And even if they would reply to him, what advice would they give? Go take antidepressants to watch my YouTube. They have no value to give a guy because they've never had a life of actual genuine struggle. I'm out here genuinely saving lives, genuinely saying to men, the world you now live in is so competitive that if you're not a competitive male, you're going to be perma depressed. You don't have a mental disease. You're just in a competitive environment and you are losing. 
You need to become a competitive person. There's no easy way. It's going to be hard. It's going to suck. But if you get to talk G, the name, if you get there, it's a life worth living. Right. That's what I'm saying. And then millions of young men are going, wow, he's showing that you can be born from nothing, single parent on a fucking council estate in the worst town in England, be stabbed, come from nothing and survive and end up with a, a multimillionaire. Uh, maybe I can do it if I work hard and I'm diligent and I try hard and I'm really giving hope to the world. And then they delete me. Then they put up a new thing about men's mental health saying which pill they should take. And then they put James Charles of him on the algorithm. And I argue that point, absolutely. I think the most dangerous men on earth are the weak men. I think inside of every single man, we're born with a fire inside of us that if we do not control, can destroy ourselves and other people. And if you look at men who have no emotional control, because that's what they're trying to teach us to have. They're saying, listen, you're a man, you're allowed to just cry all the time and have no emotional control, no stoicism, just be, come, react to your emotions. Do you know what happens when you tell men to just react to their emotions? Anger. You have school shootings, you have rape, you have violence. That's what happens when you tell men to have no emotional control. These school shooters are kids with no emotional control. Rapists are men with no emotional control. Violence and the bullshit you see on the street are men with no emotional control. Telling men to not be stoic is gonna create a, a breed of violent young men who have no emotional control, can't control their emotions and act out on them. That is absolutely and utterly more dangerous to society than me coming along saying, listen, I don't give a fuck how you feel, young man. It doesn't matter how you feel. You have duties and you have responsibilities as an adult and you must comply and act a certain way regardless of how you feel. That is better for society as a whole, especially as I'm only teaching the tenants of, listen, go to the gym anyway. Doesn't matter, you don't feel like it, go anyway. Listen, your girlfriend left you, your heart's broken. You're not allowed to stalk her, she doesn't want you. Get the fuck over it. What I'm saying is good for the world. They're saying, no, yeah. act out to your emotions. Cool, you're creating stalkers, rapists, and school shooters. These people are fucking dangerous. I think that one of the main reasons people hate me is because my message is one of the fact that I came from absolutely nothing. I never had a privileged upbringing in any regard, and I became exactly what I wanted to be. And if you subscribe to my message and you're a fat, unhappy man, then you know all of the failures are your own. I'm a reflection. I am saying that if you understand how I think and my world, you could have become anything you want to be. But you're unhappy with who you are, and that is your fault. So the people who hate me sit there and go, well, if he's right, then I fucked up. If he's right, I could have been anyone I wanted to be. And I fucked up, so he can't be right. He has to be wrong, because this is not my fault. This is the fault of whatever. I had an unlucky upbringing, or my girl left yeah. me, or that. It's someone else's That's fault. Right. If I take responsibility like Tate tells me, then I'm a fuck up. Right. So I have to hate Tate. Tate has to be wrong. And that's why if you look at the general, the composition of my haters, I'm talking about their physical composition as people. You can just look at the people, he likes Tate. He hates Tate. Yep. He likes Tate. She likes Tate. She she wants to go on Tate's y'all. She she can't stand his ass. She like it's very easy physically. to see physically. You can just look at their faces. And just, yep, 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 yep. No, yep, no. You can see it right because it's all about personal responsibility, which is why I teach, and that's why a lot of people hate. Me. You accept that in a basic pickup game of basketball for ten thousand dollars without referees and judges, humans are going to naturally avert to cheating to make sure they win. Do you think the people who are in charge of the world? for the power and control of the entire populace and all of its resources are not gonna consider cheating to win? You think it's not gonna cross their mind to just go, you know what, let's just change this little hey, bit. I was thinking. Like, you're gonna sit right. there and believe, no, it's fair. Nothing is fair. It's, nothing has ever been fair. I've, if you've lived a life of genuine hardship, the first thing you will learn is that nothing is ever fair. I've never seen a fair fight on the street. I've never seen a fair relationship. I've never seen a fucking person lose his girlfriend or lose their husband fairly. I've never seen a fair incident on the fucking road when someone gets crushed by a truck. The world is a very unfair place. And humans come along and we purport this idea, that, don't worry, if we're in charge, we'll make it fair. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. Nothing is ever, ever fair. And the human inclination is to win as it should be. And the more powerful you are and the higher the stakes, the higher your inclination to win as it should be. This is human nature. You wouldn't be able to put yourself in a position of power if you thought any other way. So if you're gonna sit there and accept the basis that we're gonna cheat in a basic basketball game, that people cheat in football games, that people cheat in poker, and people cheat in all this bullshit, and then say no, but they're not gonna cheat to control the world, then you're asinine. Right. It's all a fucking lie, it's all a cheat. Um, where there's a correlation between people who are free thinkers and people who have opinions which differ from the norm and their testosterone levels. I don't know if you've ever seen this. But the higher your testosterone level, the more likely you are to stand up and say something that the group doesn't agree with. The basic premise behind it biologically is you're more prepared to defend your idea. If you stand up against five men and say, you're wrong, I believe this, at some point, and especially in history, that can become violent. 
So if you don't have the capability or at least the bravery to stand up and face the possibility of violence, you're more likely to just comply with the group thing. So they've done a whole bunch of studies that proves somebody who is combative, not in a negative way, but combative as a whole in regards to not physically afraid of having a, of having a confrontation, let's say, is more likely to have an independent idea as opposed to somebody who is the complete opposite. They're just pure group think because fish, fish swim in schools, right? It's how they protect themselves. So it's an interesting point you have there. And also that can be extrapolated if you look at the political parties of the world or you look at the different ideas, et cetera. You can usually look at someone and kind of see their politics. Sometimes you can look at them and go, yeah, yeah, I get it, right? So there's a lot, biology is a huge part to play with it. And yeah, I agree with you. And, and, and you're totally right. My view, like every other person's view on earth is bias. And I have a large degree of individualism and a large degree of I can fix this myself or I'll be okay by myself. And that's how I was raised. And it's also my genetic makeup. And you're right. I completely agree with you. And I understand that. And that's why each to their own. I'm not saying everybody should decide to go move to Serbia because you're right. There's mobsters in Serbia that will take advantage of a whole bunch of people completely. But for myself and my own personal chessboard, that's how I've set up life. And that's why the, the students who follow me and the kids I talk to, I say, listen, life is extremely difficult as a man. It's very fucking hard. There is no way I can tell you to win unless you're a top tier man. I can't sit here and give you a cheat code that allows you to stay a loser and win. I can only tell you what I've done. I became extremely wealthy. I became extremely capable. I became extremely smart. I developed a vast network of individuals that nobody wants to mess with. And I set up a life that makes me uh, in difficult to damage. That's what I did. You're saying, how can I comply, 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 and stay weak and stay stupid and be safe from, from tyranny? And I say to you, you can't do that. That's why I teach the tenants I teach and that's also why I think they find me so threatening because I'm teaching people to, to, to do exactly that. I say, listen, there's no strength of mind or strength of opinion without strength of body. First thing you need to do is go train. Don't care what you think. Don't care what you think. Too small. First thing you need to do is go train. That's number one. If you think two plus two is four and I think two plus two is five and we're gonna argue this to the end, it's gonna be five. So <laughs> you better go do something. Newsflash, two plus two is five now. That's the reality, tape. but that's the reality of earth, right? And, and I teach kids this reality. I teach men this reality. And by even doing basic things like teaching young men to go and strong, be strong physically, which is, we all, I'd like to think we live in a world where that's all seen as a good thing. There are people in the world who sit there and go, wait, wait, wait. Making them physically stronger is gonna affect our ability to change the narrative in their minds in real time with our matrix program. That is negative. Do he cares about? I care about the world as a whole. I don't give a fuck. I don't care if they delete me for everywhere. I don't care if I go missing from all of social media forever. I don't care, I have money, I'm fine, I'll go to the mountains, I'll take my car, I'll chill. I have a good life, it doesn't matter to me, right? We have different objectives. So yeah, if my objective was primarily number one concern, keep YouTube, then of course I'd talk differently, but that was never my objective. So people will argue he's smarter, I would just argue he has far less important intentions, and I'll argue that he has less moral character, and he's quicker to sell out. The, a lot of the things I say, I'll also be honest, a lot of things I say, I really don't think were bannable offenses. I just think I said things that got so popular. I don't think it's the things I said. I think it's how many times they were listened to. Women and men, look after yourselves. I'm a full grown man, four time kickboxing world champion. There's places I don't go alone. Like, I, I came here with security. That's called being an intelligent adult. So I, this is what I was trying to say. I was trying to say you need to, women need to protect themselves and bear some responsibility to make sure they don't put themselves in situations where bad things can happen to them easily. I'd like to think that's a pretty logical point. No, Andrew said rape's fine. Andrew said it's women's fault. I didn't say that. I, I really didn't say that. It's completely insane. If, when, if I speak to my brother's daughter, or when I have daughters on my own, and they say, I'm concerned, how do I protect myself? I'm not gonna say, don't worry, here's how we're gonna protect you. I'm gonna rewrite the mentality of every man on the planet so you can walk around naked at night. I'm gonna say, listen, you don't go out at night. You better, I'll come pick you up. Who are you going with? That's just intelligent adult think. But they've taken it, misconstrued it, taken it completely out of context, put it on TikToks, reported it, media machine picked it up, lied about me, deleted me so I can't defend myself, and now I'm dangerous to the world. It's a fucking scam. It's all a scam. And it's actually quite interesting because the people who are close to me have said to me in real time, Andrew, you've impressed us. I said, how? They goes, the hit piece they've done on you is unprecedented in the world, and you seem unfazed. So it's not a matter of being unfazed, it's, it's slightly annoying. It's a matter of just analyzing, you know, what I can actually do about it. But um, I think most people who had been through the shit I've been through right now would be genuinely upset and affected by it. I don't give a fuck, right? Because I've, I've set my life up in a way that I know I'm okay. But not many people can handle the entire world saying you're a fucking rape apologist and we're gonna delete him from the entire world, he's dangerous to women. Not many people are gonna want that to happen to them. So what they've done is genuinely criminal because this is bullshit. 
I, I was sticking up for women against the feminists saying, don't tell women to go out at night, they're gonna get hurt. It's absolutely insane. And like you correctly identified earlier, if someone were to hurt a, a female member of my family, it'd be the biggest mistake they ever fucking made. Say this, Tenacity. I say this all the time. I say the best things that ever happened to me are the worst things that ever happened to me. All the trauma and bullshit I've been through in my life are the best things that ever happened to me. Because as a man, if you've not had a difficult life, you cannot be good at being a man. Being a good man and being good at being a man, they're two slightly different things. But to be good at being a man, you need to, be, to have been through so much shit yeah. that when the Matrix deletes your entire life from the internet and starts lying about you at mass, and people start doing protests and wanting you fucking hung, and they're looking for your family members, and reporters start calling every ex-girlfriend you've ever had, trying to convince them and bribe them to lie, to come out and say you're something you're not. When they're genuinely out to put you in jail, that you can sit there and be focused and stoic enough to go, you know what? Okay, what's the chessboard? What's gonna happen? Who's trying to shoot me right now? Nobody. Okay, so it's better than it was a couple years ago. Okay, so X, Y, Z, and plan through it, right? You're never gonna be capable as a man if you've not had trauma. The best men ever have had trauma. If you call a police officer, you need a brave police officer. He ain't gonna be brave unless he's been through shit. Yeah. He's not gonna be brave unless he's been through shit. So we also, as a society, sit and, and, and look at men and go, we want, well, there's two kinds of society. There's the matrix society, but the true society, the true women with a brain, they actually, I want a man who's strong, who's supportive, who's intelligent, who financially provides, et cetera. Then you're gonna want a man to some degree who's been through some shit. Yeah. And a man who's internalized it and used it as a weapon. And this is what I say to people. People email me their long lists of all the bad things that happened to them. And I reply, fantastic. You are so lucky. You have all the building blocks to become the exact kind of man you wanna be. If none of this shit happened to you, when something else bad happens to you later, you wouldn't be able to deal with it. So get your shit together, right? So this is so important. Trauma is such an important part of being a man. And, and the Matrix talks of trying to say that trauma is terrible and avoid trauma, or if you get trauma, take a pill. And, and, and that's unrealistic. Trauma is going to happen to you, and you, you as a man need to internalize it, accept it, and weaponize it to become the best version of yourself you can be. And that requires mental strength and stoicism. It does not require, oh, and be more emotional. If you're more emotional, you're going to fall apart when shit happens. You're going to end up like Logan Paul, crying your eyes out on TV like a bitch. Interesting. The men who support me online have their shit together. The men who hate me are fat. The men who have done the takedown videos of me are objectively, objectively unattractive individuals. I'm not trying to be insulting. Just objectively obese, unattractive individuals, right? People who don't have their life together. It's the same even more with women. You can find 10 women who are sticking up for me, supporting me. They're all beauty queens. And then you find some girl sitting there, some troll sitting in the corner. Andrew's bad for women. You know, so there's a lot to be said there, right? And hate always comes from below. It never comes from above. The people who have their lives together, whether male or female, love me. The people who have failed and they know that the failure is their own fault. And I show I'm a good mirror. I reflect their own failures at them. Oh, yeah, of course they hate. And that's what's happened here. What's most upsetting is as follows. This whole idea of protecting women and misogyny has been weaponized to attack someone they don't like. These people saying that we need to get them down to these misogynists, they don't give a fuck about women, these people. You think they care? There's some fat troll. So there's some dude called Daz who made a takedown video of me who just came out, came out actually on my last podcast. Turns out he was talking to a 13 year old girl. So he's a fat pedophile. So there's a fat, fat pedophile who did a video on YouTube about me saying that I'm dangerous for women. Got 10 million hits because he's objectively unattractive, saying that he cares about women, but he's a pedophile himself. He doesn't care about women. He's jealous of me. He's jealous of who I am and my lifestyle. So he's found something he can use to weaponize. If he can't make up that bullshit and attack me, how else can he attack me? Can't call me broke. Can't call me dumb. Can't call me stupid. Like, what can he call me? Well, he's better than me at everything. But if I take this and pretend to give a shit, he doesn't give a fuck. I build orphanages in Romania. I, I, have, a, I have a charity that rescues stray dogs. I, I take time out of my life replying to emails, saving people from suicide. What the fuck does this guy do for anybody? Nothing. But he's the good person because he gives a shit? No. He's using it as a vehicle to attack somebody who he knows is his superior and every single human metric that can be measured by modern science. And he dislikes me for it. All of this is just weaponized care. Oh, we, we care so much about, they don't care about fucking anything. They don't care about people. They just dislike me. And that's a very different thing. It's all been false from the beginning. I've seen through it all from the absolute beginning. It's a matrix attack. And like I said, it's, I told you how it happened. YouTube strike, meta, YouTube, media, 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 Uber, Gmail, Discord, Skype, Twitch, boom, 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 boom. It's all a fucking coordinated hit piece. It's bullshit.